Their story had a tragic end of an epic journey, the kind that legends are made of. It's a story that would be etched into mountaineering history in the years to come, as Francis Di Stefano Arsentiev and Sergei Arsentiev said their goodbyes to their family on May 20th, 1998. The farewells were filled with the air of adventure, excitement, and perhaps a hint of nervousness. These were mountaineers who had conquered some of the world's most challenging peaks. But their last journey to Mount Everest would prove to be their most dangerous yet. They had set out to climb Mount Everest without the assistance of supplemental oxygen. A daring and bold move, one that few had attempted before them. And yet, in the end, it would cost them everything because we know Everest has proved time and again to be a place from which some people never make it back home alive. So let's dive into the story of these fearless climbers and lovers whose passion drove them to take on some of the world's most daunting peaks and the heartbreaking fate awaiting them on the unforgiving slopes. Francis Arsentiev was drawn to the mountains and the thrill of climbing from a young age. Her father took her to the Colorado mountains when she was just six years old. And from that moment on, she was hooked. Her passion for climbing took her on several journeys throughout her life. She journeyed from Annapurna Summit to Everest, her last tragic stop. Besides that, she conquered several other mountains like Peak Goodwill, 5,800 meters, Denali's West Buttress, and Elbrus, with her Russian husband, Sergei Arsentiev. Sergei himself was born in 1959 in Russia. He moved to the United States in 1990 and eventually settled in Colorado. From a young age, he had a passion for climbing and was a skilled and experienced high-altitude climber. In 1992, Sergei summited Mount Everest, the highest peak in the world. This achievement was a significant milestone in Sergei's climbing career, making him one of the few Russians to have accomplished this feat. He was known as the Snow Leopard for climbing Russia's five highest peaks. Not just that, but he had also climbed all the Russian peaks above 7,000 meters and successfully completed a traverse of all three tops of Kangchenjunga, a feat achieved by only a select few. But that wasn't it. One of his most impressive accomplishments was climbing Annapurna without the use of supplemental oxygen, and he also made his way to the summit via the north face in alpine style. It was in Annapurna that he met Francis Arsentiev in 1991 and they fell deeply in love. The following year, in 1992, they exchanged their wedding vows and committed their lives to each other. Together, they had a son named Paul. Their shared passion for climbing surpassed any other love they had in common. Frances, hence, often joined her husband on various expeditions, such as Denali's West Buttress and Elbrus. Frances, by any means, wasn't a professional mountaineer, but became the first American woman to ski down Elbrus and climb its east and west peaks. Driven by this immense passion and unwavering confidence after this achievement, she carried a fierce ambition to become the first woman to conquer Mount Everest without relying on supplemental oxygen. Hence, the couple set out on their expedition together to make history on May 20th, 1998. Sergei and Francis encountered several obstacles that disrupted their smooth ascent to the summit. One significant challenge was the weather. They had to delay their attempts multiple times due to the powerful winds, ultimately prolonging their stay on the mountain. By May 18th, the pair had scaled a height of 7,700 meters, and the following day they reached 8,200 meters and settled at Camp 6. However, their luck turned on May 20th, as they initiated their next stage from Camp 6, which was met with unfavorable conditions, including heavy snowfall. For those of you who don't know, Camp 6 was a high-altitude base camp established at a height of around 8,200 meters. This was a critical point in their climb, as it was the last camp before the final move to the peak. As per the reports, the couple's headlamps were lost during their climb from Camp 6. They again attempted to continue on May 21st, but had to retreat after ascending just about 100 meters. This prolonged stay at Camp 6, which is deemed extremely dangerous, exceeded their expected duration. The couple experienced exhaustion as they had been scaling without oxygen that impaired their ability to make rational decisions. 
A common physiological response to insufficient oxygen supply. Progress was slow, and the situation grew increasingly unstable by the hour. However, despite encountering numerous setbacks, they eventually triumphed, reaching the peak on their third try from Camp 6 on May 22, 1998. After enduring nearly three days at a height surpassing 8,000 m due to rough weather, the couple found themselves separated while descending. Sergei successfully reached the camp, but Francis became stranded en route. Around 9.35 a.m., at an elevation of 8,450 meters, Sergei encountered the five members of the Uzbekistan trek team, but he was alone. When they inquired about his wife's whereabouts, Sergei appeared bewildered and responded, Where is my wife? Hasn't she come down? This was after Sergei had grown increasingly anxious and set out to look for her, equipped with oxygen and medicine when she failed to return to camp. But the situation took a turn for the worse. The next day, as the Uzbek team ascended towards the peak, they discovered Francis in a semi-conscious state. It was apparent that her body was oxygen-deprived, and she had also sustained frostbite. Despite Francis Arsentiev's desperate pleas for help, the Uzbekistan team, who initially found her, were unable to provide the necessary assistance due to the lack of oxygen. Reports have indicated that Francis begged the climbers not to leave her and repeatedly stated that she was an American, but unfortunately, she did not receive the help she needed. They did, however, carry her body some distance up the mountain and left her there. They reported that on their descent, the team encountered Sergei, who was attempting to reach Francis. The next day, the Uzbek team discovered Francis's body in the exact location where they had left her the previous day. They also found a rope and ice axe beside her, indicating that Sergei had successfully reached her and likely left to seek additional help. But it didn't end there. According to reports, Francis was discovered alive the following day, May 24, 1998, by two South African climbers. They found her in the same location where the Uzbekistan team had left her. Ian Woodall and Cathy O'Dowd were attempting to climb to reach the peak themselves when they stumbled upon what they initially thought was a frozen body clothed in a purple jacket. Cathy O'Dowd observed that Francis appeared to have a broken spine. She described finding the climber lying on her stomach with her harness attached to a fixed rope, her head and legs hanging down on either side. O'Dowd carefully approached the body and realized that it was a woman. She noticed that Francis's hands were swollen and attempted to change her clothes but found that she was too heavy to move, like dead weight. As they approached the person in the purple jacket to offer help, Ian Woodall and Cathy O'Dowd were taken aback to find out that the climber was Francis Arsentiev, who had previously shared tea with them at the base camp. O'Dowd remembered that Arsentiev had spoken affectionately about her family and home and hadn't seemed to be an overly fixated climber during their conversation in the camp. They observed that Francis's body had been severely affected by frostbite, causing her skin to turn hard and white, giving her a wax-like appearance. This led O'Dowd to comment that the fallen climber resembled Sleeping Beauty, a name the media quickly adopted for their headlines. Unfortunately, another contribution to the title was that Francis was lying there half-conscious, appearing as if she were in a deep slumber, awaiting someone to awaken her. The Uzbekians who had previously bound her with a rope to lend a hand arrived at the scene and Kathy appealed to them to help. However, they explained that they had attempted to assist Francis the day before, but her condition was beyond help. Despite spending more than an hour in temperatures as low as minus 30 degrees Celsius, Kathy and her team ultimately made the hard choice to leave Francis behind as they were unable to bring her back to base camp on their own. Ultimately, Cathy and the team also abandoned their climb. Even seasoned climbers like Woodall and O'Dowd were forced to abandon Arsentiev due to the hazardous conditions, prioritizing their own safety. While some may perceive the decision to leave Francis behind as heartless, it was practical as it was simply impossible to carry her down the mountain without risking further harm. Ian and Cathy were devastated by the experience, which they claimed continued to haunt them. It meant that both of their bodies were still left on the mountain, enveloped in mystery and hidden in the icy depths of Everest. But this mystery was partially resolved the next year, as in 1999, Jake Norton, a member of the Mallory and Irvine expedition, 
discovered Sergei's body lower on the mountain face. It appeared that he had fallen while attempting to rescue his wife. His death became the testament to a mountaineer's love. But while pictures of Francis's body were circulating online, her body still wasn't found. In 2007, Ian Woodall was still haunted by the tragic image of Francis Arsentiev lying frozen and alone on the mountain. He felt compelled to lead an expedition to give her a more dignified burial. It wasn't until 2007 that Ian Woodall led an expedition called the Tau of Everest to bury the bodies of Francis Arsentiev and an unidentified climber known as Green Boots, who were visible from the nearby climbing route. Woodall and his team were able to locate Francis's body. In a respectful ritual, they wrapped her in an American flag and moved her to a new location away from the public eye. And with that, it was finally the end of the tragic story of Francis Di Stefano, Arsentiev and Sergei Arsentiev. That brings us to the end of the video. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. Also, feel free to leave a comment down below with any thoughts or suggestions for future videos. Until next time.